What's up, YouTube? Apple has just announced their first computers running on Apple Silicon, specifically computers running on the M1 chip. And there is a lot of excitement around these new computers, but there's also some concern about when creative apps are going to be able to run natively on these computers. I am both excited and concerned as well, but I think that this might be a perfect time for some of you to leave Adobe behind, to ditch that subscription, and to move on to some of these new computers. Let's talk about why. Okay, so there seems to be a lot of concern around Adobe programs specifically, and I think that it's pretty obvious why. Adobe has not in recent years shown themselves to be the most agile of software companies. And we've talked really recently on this channel about how they have struggled to bring their applications to the iPad. We know that it took a long time, longer than expected, for Photoshop to come to the iPad, and then took a long time for Illustrator to come to the iPad. And that does not bode well for Adobe being able to bring their applications in to run natively on a new platform like Apple Silicon. And the other thing is, people really, really heavily rely on Adobe applications in order to do their work. So there's a lot of concern, if I get a new computer, will I be able to use the applications that I need to be able to use? Apple is really trying to make everybody feel more comfortable by talking a lot about Rosetta 2, which is the translation layer that will allow Intel-based apps to run in emulation on Apple Silicon Macs. And they say that this works super well and that some applications even run faster in emulation than they did running natively on Intel-based Macs. But it's hard to know until we actually see this happening how this is going to work out. And I'm sure that tests will be coming out very soon. What's concerning to me is that they didn't really show any Adobe apps running in emulation. And that is a concern because I feel like if those things were running really well in emulation, they would have shown that to us because that would have been a big deal. The other way that they've tried to allay concern about this is to say that Adobe apps are coming soon. They did say that Lightroom is coming in December and that Photoshop will be coming early next year. What's concerning about that though is we know that when Adobe says something, it doesn't always happen. And so just because they've said that they think they're going to release something early next year, what does early next year really mean? For a lot of professionals, they're not going to be able to go three, four, five months without Photoshop running on their Mac or running well on their Mac, depending on how it runs in emulation. And so that could be a big concern. The other thing is it's very focused on photography. And that was a concern for other types of creative professionals because there was no mention at all of Illustrator or InDesign or Premiere or After Effects or Audition or any other of the Creative Cloud apps. And so we have no idea when those are going to be coming natively to Apple Silicon Macs. Photographers are also concerned because the shot that was shown of Lightroom running on an Apple Silicon based Mac was not Lightroom Classic, which is the more beloved and robust version of Lightroom. It was Lightroom CC, which a lot of photographers have not been happy with, have not really enjoyed using, and don't feel like it has the feature set and the usability that they've come to expect from Lightroom. So I want to know, if you're a photographer watching this video, go ahead, drop in the comments, and let me know. If you got an Apple Silicon based Mac, would you try to just use Adobe Lightroom CC, or would you go ahead and would you try and use Lightroom Classic running an emulation? Which one of those do you think would be better for you? And then again, the other types of professionals, there just doesn't appear to be any information yet about when that will be ready. And Adobe apps are complicated. It may take them a long time to be able to recompile them to run on these Apple Silicon based Macs. So here's the thing to consider. I don't think any of these three Macs that have currently been announced are really the computers that creative professionals are looking for. They didn't talk about the MacBook Pro 16 inch, they didn't talk about the iMac, they didn't talk about the iMac Pro or the Mac Pro. And those are the computers that professionals are probably really most interested in. These are more aimed at the consumer market. And I think that was really wise on Apple's part to get these Apple Silicon based chips out into the wild, out into the public's hands. Some people will try and run professional apps on them, a lot of people won't. And so if Adobe's emulation experience is really bad, it won't affect that many users right off the bat and they'll have a chance to fix it. They'll have a chance to recompile their code to make it run natively. And hopefully Adobe will be very motivated to make moves in that direction because so many of their users are Mac based and over the next couple of years will upgrade to Macs based in Apple Silicon. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't buy a computer right now. If one of these three computers is the right computer for you, there's not really a reason for you to hold back and not get it. Because you can't just go ahead and stop your Adobe subscription and switch to some other creative apps. It might be the perfect time to do that, actually, because it gives you a reason to do so. You could actually tell Adobe, hey, I'm canceling my subscription because your programs aren't ready to run on these 
new computers and I have a new computer. So it could be a very convenient time to do that. Think about it like this. If you cancel your Adobe subscription, over the course of the next year, you'll save over $600. That is almost the price of the new Mac Mini and half the price of the new MacBook Pro. And so that could really offset your cost because then you can just purchase some of these single purchase licenses for programs like Affinity and DaVinci and you'll be able to roll along much better. In my video that I did at the beginning of the year talking about leaving Adobe, I recommended that you use the Affinity programs to replace Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator and that you use DaVinci to replace Premiere After Effects and Audition. And the great thing is, we know that those programs are ready to go. Ashley Houston from Affinity was actually one of the featured developers during Apple's developer montage, and he said that it was super easy to take the Affinity programs and move them over here. Now, I think that's true for probably a couple reasons. One is that the Affinity programs are so much younger than the Adobe programs that they don't have a lot of this code baggage coming along with them. They're much lighter and more modern programs, and so it's got to be much easier to recompile those. The other thing is, Affinity's already been producing programs for Apple chips on the iPad. And so they are very comfortable doing that. Whereas Adobe has started to produce programs for the Apple chips on iPad, but you know, their success has been rather spotty up until this point. So I think that Affinity really came in with an advantage and their apps are already updated. They're ready to go. I received a notification about that immediately. And then DaVinci, we saw DaVinci demoed during the program to show how powerful Apple chips were using large footage in files. And so we know that DaVinci is ready to go. And we know that DaVinci Resolve 17 was just released in beta. And that when 17 comes out, it's going to be a universal app. So it will run equally well on Apple Silicon Macs and Intel based Macs. And so I don't think you have to have any concerns about that you could hop into an Apple Silicon based Mac right now and have a fully functioning suite ready to go for $150 for $50 for each of the Affinity programs and the free version of DaVinci Resolve. And you could be rolling forward very easily on one of these Macs. And even though these are really consumer aimed Macs, because of Apple Silicon, we expect them to be able to run so much better than the Intel based Macs. They actually showed the MacBook Air editing video footage, high quality 4K footage, which the MacBook Air has traditionally struggled to do. But if you don't need a computer right now, I would highly suggest waiting because we can expect over the next year that almost every one of Apple's Mac lineup is going to be refreshed. We should see a new iMac, a new 16 inch MacBook Pro, maybe even a new iMac Pro or a new Mac Pro. Mac Pro is a little bit harder to say because it gets refreshed so infrequently and it has a lot of other considerations involved in it. But the other ones at least I would really expect to see refreshed next year. So if you can't hold off, I would say probably best to hold off if you're a creative professional looking at these. If you do need a new computer, I would not recommend buying an Intel based Mac right now. Although Apple has said they will continue to support Intel based Macs, really the future is Apple Silicon. And so you're just going to be hampering yourself for the next several years if you choose to get a new Intel based Mac right now. I would go ahead and see if you can hold off or see if one of these new machines fits your needs and go that route so that you can get on Apple Silicon as fast as possible because the performance gains that we're going to see from Apple Silicon are likely to just be huge. We're likely to have never seen something like this before. Based on everything we know about the efficiencies in the iPad and the iPhone, which are already using Apple chips and the Mac minis that were sent out to developers to recompile their code, and these computers are likely to outperform the Intel based Macs by leaps and bounds. Really, you will be future proofing yourself by making your next computer an Apple Silicon based Mac. Of course, the other option if you need something new to work on right now is to just go with an iPad or iPad Pro. And I've got lots of videos about using the iPad or the iPad Pro for creative work. And of course, I have lots of courses linked in the description of this video for creative applications running on the iPad. So you can go ahead and check those out if you're thinking about maybe going the iPad route. But now I want to hear from you. What do you think about all this? Are you excited about these new Apple Silicon based Macs? Are you thinking you're going to get one? Are you thinking you'll hold off and wait? I want to know what you're thinking. I want to know what you're thinking about Adobe, whether or not you feel like this is a good time to leave them behind, whether or not you already have left them behind. So there's nothing holding you back from going on to one of these new Macs. Or are you pretty sure that you just need Adobe so much that you're willing to stick with an Intel Mac for the foreseeable future? Thanks so much for watching. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.